Well, to be honest, I have no idea what inspired me to become a doctor in the first place. By nature, I'm a really passionate person. I like practically everything I do. I never get bored. And I think whatever I was doing in college at the time made me apply to medical school. I was not pre-med. I hadn't even taken pre-med courses. Uh, and when I actually got into medical school, while everybody else was taking a senior year vacation, I was taking my pre-med uh, requirements to get into, into medical school. I don't know how I, so I don't know what made me do it in the first place, but I can tell you what keeps me going and ma what makes me love it. And that's the real ability to help people and make a difference by applying just common sense logic to the, um, to the practice of medicine. What, um, what I see what I see happening around me is something that I don't like very much, and that's um, the, with increasing regulations and um, more and more doctors are being asked to treat patients according to different algorithms. An algorithm is, for those of you who don't know, is sort of a step-by-step -step, um, explanation of what you do. If you see this, do that. And I don't like that approach to medicine. I think that the algorithmic approach is um, is fine if the doctor doesn't know about the condition he's treating. And that's, I suppose, in a public health se sense, if you've got too many patients or, and not enough doctors, then you've got to teach doctors to take care of patients who have conditions they don't know, that they're not that expert at. But when you're a specialist, at, like a urologist, that should no longer be necessary. Because when you, algorithms are for populations of patients, uh, populations of patients, which means that if you took, for example, everybody that had, had to rush to the bathroom to, uh, because they felt like they had to rush to the bathroom and you gave all of them an antibiotic, which a lot of them don't need, you'd be correct in maybe 50 or 60 percent of the time and 50 to 60 percent of the time they wouldn't even need anything and you say well that's pretty good we can eliminate 50 to 60 percent of the patients but antibiotics and all treatments have complications i prefer to treat the patients not in groups and treat 60 percent of them but i'd like to take the patient or i think we should take the patient one at a time and not say well you most likely have an infection but actually do the test to see whether or not you have an infection. Only about half of women, for example, with symptoms of infection actually have an infection. And uh, th that's kind of, in an in encapsulated way, um, what keeps me going. I want to take the individual patient, you the, whatever is necessary to find out what their particular problem is, and treat them based on the underlying cause of their, uh, of their problem, taking into account their wants and needs and expectations. So uh, just to end, for, give another example. For example, a person may get up four or five times at night and in one patient, the, uh, the, the patient can't get back to sleep. It's driving them nuts and we've got to find the cause and treat it. Another patient getting up four or five times at night might say, you know what, the bathroom's right next to my Right, right next to my bedroom. It doesn't bother me at all. That patient needs no treatment at all. So being able to individualize and give each patient the best possible outcome uh, that, that I can based on the particulars of their particular problem is what keeps me, uh, keeps me coming back in medicine.